Welcome to the second video of uh, the Spring Framework tutorial series. And this uh, this one we will continue kind of the, the previous one where we have some files related to nights and the quests. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do automatic wiring. So instead of manually writing the wiring into the configuration file, we can do it automatically or actually ask Spring Framework to do it automatically. So we have the files here. We have a um, two interfaces. We have the night interface that has the embark on quest method. We have um, a quest interface that has the embark method. And these interfaces are implemented by the Brave Knight. So Brave Knight implements night and overriding the embark on quest. And the Brave Knight also has the quest instance variable here um, that is assigned at the moment through the constructor. But I'm going to remove the constructor later so you can see how we can assign it automatically using uh, auto wiring. And the, the embark on, on quest is simply calling the quest's embark method. And uh, we have one quest here also, quest implementation, dragon slaying quest that is just printing out some message about slaying a dragon and it's implementing the quest interface. Then, um, well, we have the test app that is at the moment empty. I'm going to write the test app code here. And that's all. So in order to do the automatic wiring in Spring Framework, we need the configuration file again. I deleted the previous configuration file because I'm going to show you how to do it from the scratch. So we make a new Java configuration file for Spring Framework. Call it again config, maybe, yeah, just, just config. And again, the same thing like what we did before is to make it a configuration file by using the configuration annotation. Um, additionally, we will use another annotation called component scan. Now, what component scan is doing is that it's going to go through the classes in the package. At the moment, it's the default package, but could, you could also define a package here, a base package. Um, it will go through the classes and try to find components to be subjected as um, um, to be subjected for um, this automatic wiring. So I will show you in a moment how we can define a component that can be found by the Spring Framework. But uh, otherwise, we don't really need to put anything to config. So we don't need to define those beans that we did before. This will be all automatic. So this is the very basic configuration file that we need. And now, how can we make a bean like this, a Brave Knight, into a, a component that can be automatically scanned? You might be tempted to write bean here, but this will not work. This bean doesn't fit here. Bean is only used in configuration file. Instead, we use component. This is a annotation that defines a Java class to be a component that can be scanned by the Spring Framework. Um, instead, you could also write one of the sub annotations of the component. There is a, a service that we are usually defining a business service. There is also um, other things like repository that is used for, with, for the databases, but I'm, I'm going to define this one later, so not going to use it now. Just use the basic component, basic bean. So this Brave Knight can be now automatically scanned. Now, the same thing we can do for the Dragon Slaying Quest. It's another component in our application. So we also add the component annotation here. And so now we have two components. We have uh, this Dragon Slaying Quest and we have the Brave Knight. And now the Brave Knight is using a quest instance variable. Um, I'm going to delete this one. So let's think, how can we assign a value to this quest instance variable without doing it manually? And this is where the auto wiring magic comes. We simply write auto wired and that's it. Now, any kind of quest can be automatically wired here. So when the spring framework is going through your files while it's doing the automatic scanning of your components, it's going to find some component that is implementing the quest interface. And then it's going to inject, it will do the dependency injection. It will inject that component here. So the Dragon Slaying quest is a quest, 
and it's also a component. Therefore, it can be automatically wired to here. It will be wired here. Now, so, so there are two steps, actually three steps in this automatic wiring. First, as we did here, we defined the component scan. Second, we define the components, this one and this one, two components. And third, we define the relationship between those components using the auto-wired annotation. And the spring is going to try to figure out this auto-wired here. Now, that's pretty much it. We In the uh, test application, we do the annotation config application context again to get the spring, uh, the container access, and then to get the beans from there. And this one takes the config file as the parameter, so we just load the configuration file into the container. Now we can call get bean, we can get the um, night. And now when we get the night, the spring framework is automatically finding the brave knight for us and it will at the time when it creates the brave knight it will inject the quest to that knight it's pretty cool and then we can simply call knight dot embark on quest and at the end just close the context to release any resources and let's try to run it we can see the same result than before but now with automatic wiring. The point is that we don't need to define any manual beans here. And we don't need to define connections between the beans. We don't need to wire them manually. Everything is automatic. We do the component scan, we define our components, and then we map them together using the auto wired annotation. Okay, so this works fine as long as there is only one type for each interface. Uh, one implementation for int interface. But what if we have another quest? So let's make a um, princess rescuing quest. So this quest is just printing out embark on a quest to rescue a, a princess. And now this one will also be a component. So now we have two quest components in our application. We have this princess risk queen quest and we have also the dragon slaying quest here. So two components. And now in the configuration file, we are doing the automatic component scan. So spring framework will find both of these, this one and this one, both are found by the component scan. And now when we do in the brave Brave Knight, we are auto wiring a quest. The Spring Framework will have troubles figuring out which quest to auto wire. So you can see it when we run it, we get exceptions. We cannot uh, find it says no qualifying bean of type quest is defined. Expected single matching bean, but found two. So it was expecting one match, but it found two. Now there are a couple of ways to solve it. Uh, one way is to write here as the instead of um, this one, we can write um, dragon slaying quest. So we basically write the name of the class uh, with the lowercase first, like a camel case, first case, lowercase, and then, um, then we have the second word and the third word with uppercase. And now, but then we should also modify this one. And this is kind of a breaks the idea of interfaces. Now we're actually saying here what kind of quest we are going to use. So a better way here, well, I can actually show that it works. So I'm going to do that. The spring will automatically figure out that this is going to refer to this class name. So this class name and this, this one here. So it's going to inject the dragon slaying quest here. So if I run it, I get the dragon slaying quest. Now, but let's say that we want to have only quest. We don't want to have a dragon slaying or a princess risk queen. We want to have a, just a quest. So how can, we, how can we define which quest to use if we have multiple ones? Um, 
Another way is to use so-called primary annotation, which will define that, okay, this dragon slaying quest is the primary type, so it should be used primarily. So if there are more than one quest types, this is the one to be used first. So now, if I run it again, I get the dragon slaying quest, because it's the primary. If I change the primary to princess quest, now the primary is here, I run it, now we get the princess quest. So there is also a third way, which is to use uh, an annotation called qualifier. So instead of working uh, or using this primary, we can also go to the brave knight that is actually um, injecting or auto wiring the quest. We can have an, another annotation here called qualifier. And this qualifier takes this also this the same um, class name. So it could be a, a dragon slaying quest. So this is similar than changing this one, this, this uh, variable name, except that you change it only one place. You only change it here once. You don't need to change it everywhere. Just one time. And now Spring will figure out that, okay, here we want to inject dragon slaying quest following the name of the class. So we run it, we get a dragon slaying quest. If we want to change it to the princess quest, just call princess rescuing quest. And now we get the princess quest. Now, word of caution here. If you do this one, say we just write all lowercase, small, small letters, you get an error. It cannot find it. So you, miss, you must really do it perfectly. Camel case, big letters only on the second word on. Uh, we, if you do this one, this is the, the basically the class name, also an error. So it really should have the first one, lowercase, and the following words following the same um, case than was used in the class name. So basically take the class name and change the first letter to lowercase and that's it. And now it works. All right, so this is how you do auto wiring. In most cases, you will have just one bean for one type, interface type. But in case you have more, then you can use qualifiers to define which bean you want to wire to which place. Thanks for watching and next time we'll do something cool.